Tess is a mean little bitch who takes pleasure in terrorizing her own. No, no. She is scary. No, no. Oh, Tess. She doesn't take any prisoners. But you see, no. Wilson is a bully boy who likes nothing better than to throw his weight around. He does get really aggressive, and I'm scared that one day I don't. Well, I don't know what he'll do because I've never had a dog like this before. And Casper is a fallen idol whose reputation has gone from bad to worse. He is strong, he is powerful, and he's certainly capable of killing a dog. The owners of these three dogs have had enough. It's time for extreme measures. Dog Borstal. This is the last resort for bad dogs. Set up on a secure 10-acre compound in a remote part of the English countryside, Dog Borstal is run by three of Britain's toughest trainers. My mission is to teach owners to teach dogs who's boss. Each trainer will take on one dog and attempt to reform them in just four days, using their own individual training methods. I can't change a dog's past, but I can dramatically change his future. But to reform bad dogs, they need to tackle their owners. Give me any owner with any dog, and I'll find a technique that works. For these three dogs, the freedom to behave badly is about to come to an end. Our first offender is Lakeland Terrier Tess. She's a fun-loving criminal with a dark side. Her owner, personal stylist Melanie, wanted a dog to be proud of. I didn't want a large dog, I wanted a dog that was manageable and lovely. It turned out to be quite fiery. <laughs> Much to Melanie's dismay, this little terrier has grown into a St. Trinian's terror. The only thing she's brought Melanie is heartache. Nothing is a barrier to her relentless ambitions to drive her owner round the bend. Exhausted, cross, what am I doing with this dog? Even when banished to the back garden, Tess still manages to find new ways to torment her beleaguered owner. She starts to bark and then she will circle you. No! No! And as she's circling you, she will snap at your ankles or your trousers. No! That's my foot! And it's very threatening. Oh, no, no. Oh, no! Yeah, and I think, I think, I like it to be like it's in with sharks. No, no, no! Oh, Tess! Oh, no! She is scary. Then she doesn't take any prisoners. No! Tess seems hell-bent in humiliating Melanie in as many ways as possible. Tess has made a huge impact in my life. It's like having a second child. I have to think about everything I do. I want to get my handbag out and I can't. Come on, get around here. Who's this? Come on. Oh my gosh, totally embarrassing. Who's here? You're standing in my But Tess ensures the best of her twisted games are played out in public. She just seems to be wanting to run somewhere. And the feeling of her that I feel just sick. It's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. Tess, come to mummy. Come on. No, Tess, please. No. Is the world according to Tess? Tess wins all the time. I never win. This unruly little madam has wreaked havoc long enough. She's being sent down to Dog Borstal. Tessa's trainer for the week will be Mick Martin. With 20 years experience training military and police dogs, Mick's methods are as tough as he is. A stickler for discipline, he won't tolerate bad behavior from either dog or owner. If she's one of the novices, she's in for a shot. When we leave here, you're going to be an angel. Yes, you are. Hard man Mick works miracles with dogs, but owners can be harder. Don't you bite me, little girl. Does she normally bite you? Yeah, she, oh, yeah, she bit me yesterday. She's got a lot of problems with her little dog, because it is a little <laughs> ring, you can see that straight away. Could be described as a teddy bear, but really it's got 42 teeth that'll take your left finger straight off. Bring him in. First stop is the vet. 
Do you have any problems with her at all, General? She has broken off a canine tooth here. I heard that from biting the door handle yes. or something. <laughs> That's silly. Yeah. Mick's training is demanding and Tess must be fit for the challenges ahead. Down, okay. down. Yeah. Good. Let's try it out. Next, the kennel block. And check it's locked. It's not just Tess who will have to learn to live by Mick's tough love rules. Be on time, carry the bag at all times. Now the manual, no matter what anyone else tells you, just read that. While Tess settles into Kennel Row, Melanie is taken to her accommodation. Is this a test? No, it's your stuff. <laughs> oh. No, it's just... There's a bell actually, do you want me to bring for the concierge? No. No? Okay. Home for the next four days is an ex-army tent. Yeah, I think she's in her pants now. Our next inmate is an 18-month-old American bulldog from the Wirral. Wilson is a bruising eight-stone heavyweight, used to getting what he wants. His bitch is mother of three, Elaine. My daughter's coat is a Prada coat, and if she thought, if she knew what he was doing with it, she would have a fit. <laughs> he has an insatiable appetite. And likes to keep women in their place. It would be a prison warden locking me in here. This is like my cell. If he knows I'm going out, he'll wrap his paws around me as if that you're not going. Scratches all on my side, my back. Get down! Out! I'm not going out, I'm staying. I think I'm a pushover. Hey! No. Bully boy Wilson throws his weight around outdoors as well as in just constantly pull, pull, pull. It's a nightmare. Be choking like anything. His eyes can be blood red and he still won't stop. Stop it! I'm pulling! He's a bruiser with more brawn than brain. Lane was stood with Wilson outside. Bus went past and Wilson tried to run for it. He pulled out the squad out and took her out of the foot, put my off the floor, knocked her out, broke three ribs, loosened her teeth. Straight all the face, arms, knees. It was frightening to take the tooth. Wilson hasn't turned out to be the family man Elaine had hoped for. I had books on it. I was reading on the internet what they're like. They say they're very courageous, excellent with children. His unpredictability is making him a nightmare to live with. Loving one minute, aggressive the next. He might just turn one day and say, I'm the boss in here and this is what you do. And that's where I'm frightened of. Jay, your boss? With Elaine firmly in her place, Wilson is now turning his attention to the other members of the family. He does get really aggressive. And I'm scared that one day, I don't, well, I don't know what he'll do because I've never had a dog like this before. And I think it's getting worse because he is doing a little bit of nipping. I can't keep a dog in the house with um, children. If he's going to go for me, I need to sort it before um, anything happens. Okay. Desperate times call for desperate measures. No. His trainer for the week is Lynn Davies, who has a formidable reputation for achieving results with Category A offenders. American Bulldogs, extremely strong and quite dominant by nature. This dog is going to need a firm handler. Hi, Elaine. Hey. And a very excited Wilson. <laughs> Out! Okay, let me take your papers and then you can deal with your dog. Like all dogs, Wilson must first check in with the vet to get a clean bill of health. Sit. Good boy. Come here. Oh, it looks as if he's got nice teeth. The flashes of them that I'm getting to see. Good boy. Good boy. No. No! Oh, that was stupid. Okay. Muzzle. Yes, I think so. Wilson, you're a nightmare. Just watch yourself, Ellie. Don't take any chances. <laughs> Not content with having a pop at the vet, Wilson tries his luck with trainer Lynn. You're going to have a lot of trouble with this one. That was a bit dramatic. Um, I didn't see that coming. Just wasn't expecting it. It's acting in a totally out of control manner. And we need to rethink what we're going to do here. We're going to leave the examination until later. Just too overexcited. Um, Sam. 
So um, we'll walk over, get you settled into the kennels first. Doggin! Wilson now needs time to calm down. He felt really stressed in the vet and he acted aggressively. He's a big, powerful dog. You back him into the corner, put any kind of stress on him, he's going to come out fighting. I'm not calm. I'm really, I was really stressed and I want that aggression gone. That scares me. I'm just hoping he's trainable. Five minutes in, it bites the trainer. Not a good thing. Rumours of Wilson's outburst have reached Mick. She's just had her eyes open. American Bulldog. It's got a big head, it's got a lot of teeth, it's got a lot of strength. So, uh, am I glad I've got Fufu this week? You're too f***ing right I am. Oh my god. So, what was your name? Elaine. Elaine Melanie. Melanie. Are you having a horrible time? Yeah. I've just got to fill this out because otherwise I'm going to be told off and then I'd, I'd like to talk to you then. <laughs> I've really got to do this properly because I, I do not ever want that man to make me look stupid like he did carrying my bag. So that's the first and the last time that will happen. What do I think about what her? What Camilla? She's all right. Hi, it's me. I've got Mick, uh, the swearing man. Oh, my God, he's like prima donna. He wouldn't help me with my bag. Then he put my shoulder out. I said, could you take this other part of this bag for me? He said, no, you bought that stuff, you carry it. It takes no prisoners. I'm not going to stand any crap. I'm not here to be made ridicule. It's business as usual at Dog Borstal. With two offenders already safely behind bars, the third is on his way. Ex-racing Irish greyhound Casper is a fallen idol. In his prime, he was one of the fastest dogs in the country, racing at speeds of up to 45 miles an hour. Retirement 18 months ago brought him a new home and three new women in his life, Spirit, Sky, and Debbie. I saw him race um, at Portsmouth Track in July 04, and I just fell in love with him because I thought he was handsome. Um, and being in Greyhound Rescue, I said to the trainer, when he retires, can he come home with me? Having taken him for good times and bad, Debbie had no idea the bad would by far outweigh the good. You know, in the house, there's not really an issue. But as soon as we go outside, he changes into this devil dog. Away from the limelight, Casper's fall from grace has been spectacular. At every opportunity, he behaves like a thug on a Saturday night. Drinking too much beer, smoking too much, trying to pull all the women and then ending up in the punch-up because he hasn't quite succeeded. Now he's had one too many spats with the dogs in the neighbourhood and Debbie's worried things are getting out of control. He is strong, he is powerful, he is made up of pure muscle and he's certainly capable of killing a dog. Desperate to stop Casper hitting the self-destruct button, Debbie has turned to alternative therapies. We have tried homeopathy, animal and flower essences, aromatherapy, and we've also, he also does wear crystals. He's got rose quartz on, as rose quartz is renowned for love and making people feel, and animals feel loved. She's even sought answers from the spirit world. He's had psychic healing, it sounds very bizarre, but she's asked him why he's like this. And he has said, because he, he loves me too much. But even the love of a good woman can't calm his inner demons. He's beaten me, and I've worked with greyhounds for years. <laughs> Casper is on a downward spiral. The only thing that can save him now is Dog Borstal. His trainer will be Robert Elaine, who can read dogs like a book, and greyhounds are no exception. If you keep one in a kennel and bring it out a few times a day just to run around a track chasing a rabbit and then put it in a home environment, usually you can expect problems. Hello, Robert. At Borstal, the rules state that all dogs must be vaccinated by their vets against kennel cough. Casper has been given herbal alternatives. He's not been vaccinated, is that right? Homeopathy, yeah. he has, yeah. Okay. There's no evidence at all that homeopathic vaccines work. His immune system is actually stronger than ones that are vaccinated every year. Well, 
That's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> this is perhaps an That's... argument for another time. Yeah. To avoid the possibility of infection, Casper will now be doing his time in solitary, and his owner will be under canvas. I've never camped. I've never done anything less than a four-star hotel. <laughs> so this will certainly be an experience for both of us. X-Race and Greyhound, the last thing it wants is some woolly, soft, hippie type who's just going to let it do its own thing. It'll just become a delinquent. <laughs> At Borstal, the schedule is strictly enforced. At 6 p.m., all dogs must be fed. Good girl. Before lockdown, all the dogs must be taken on a mile-long walk. Okay, send number two, please. All right, I'm balls lot here, aren't we? Number three, ready by the gate. Bigger gap tonight, mate, so uh, just relax. If you just hang on there for me, please. Watch on this heart of mine. I keep my eyes wide open all the time. I keep the ends out for the... I thought this was an unaccompanied walk. <laughs> so, Elaine, did you did your dog have a shit? Yeah, and I didn't take any bags with me, I'm sorry. It's all right, we'll talk about that when you get to the top. Push him in, shut the door, there you go. Piece of piss, out the door. No, he said it's a good job you're not on my bloody team. Which, I, it could have been worse, he could have been a lot more angrier, which I wouldn't blame him because I don't like... Ah, there it is, watch your step. I normally have rubber gloves and a mask to do this. Makes me sick. Hmm. Nine p.m. is curfew at the kennel block. The dogs and owners will need their rest. Tomorrow, the hard work will really begin. Today has been busy, very full on, and totally exhausting. I've had a very stressful day today. It's been like a, an emotional roller coaster, and I hope tomorrow I can get up in a more positive attitude. I'm feeling pretty stressed, pretty tired, um, and looking forward to tomorrow. Tess, Wilson and Casper are all Category A offenders. Wilson has been sent down for treating his owner like his bitch. And he's thought nothing of trying it on with Borstal staff either. Five minutes in, it bites the trainer. Not a good thing. Hell-raising Irish Greyhound Casper is doing time for chasing tail and brawling in public. Can this ex-race dog learn some manners in his retirement? And unruly Tess has been banged up for terrorising her owner. Can Mick rid her of both her bark and her bite? Could be described as a teddy bear, but really it's got 42 teeth. It'll take your left finger straight off. It's going to be a tough week. Will any of the dogs be ready for parole by the end of it? At Borstal, it's an early start for dogs and owners. Wilson's owner, Elaine, is up with the birds. I got to sleep around about half twelve, I think, and then I woke up with the noise from that about half four this morning. Some them crows up there, or geese or whatever, ducks, I don't know. <laughs> Whoever can possibly think camping is fun, what's their bumps feeling? I don't know, get used to it. <laughs> I think I'm going to die, actually. Before training can begin, all dogs must be walked and taken to the toilet, and kennel chores completed. After Wilson tried yeah. to bite trainer Lee at the vets, today's session will only start once that physical has been completed. Just be careful. He's got that look about mm. him. What I want you to do is put the collar on first, make sure it's nicely fitting. Then you're going to put the muzzle on for me. Get in. Hey, good boy. Stay well. But owner hey, Elaine boy. is struggling. Hey, collar on. Sit. Come here. 
starting to bite it. Get your palm up. All right. No, I don't like this. Be honest, I'm really getting scared myself. All right, okay, come out. Get in! Get in! Just hold him there. Wilson, what's this? Yeah, well. Wilson! What's this? Sorry about that. I've just got panicky. No, it's all right. They're going to need reinforcements. On the other side of Borstal, Mick's session is running like clockwork. For now. Tell me all about your dog. I think it's... Perhaps it's me. She must think, oh, this woman's absolutely dippy. I, what I want to do is to take her to... Um... Hi, Mick. Sorry, just now. We've got a problem with Wilson. Right. All trainers have been called so that the vet can safely complete her assessment. It's not only that Wilson's aggressive, it's that he's really unpredictable. So what I'm going to ask Elaine to do is put the grasper on the dog, walk him forwards, I'll then take hold of the grasper, which will probably upset him in itself, um, and then it'll be my job to hold him still enough while the vet can examine him. Good lad. Good boy. Once we had the dog catcher on him and he, he knew he wasn't kind of guessing away, he seemed to actually relax re reasonably well, so we were able to examine him as much as I wanted to. Good boy. We're going to leave him in here, let him calm down, have a look at him later and see how he is then. Then hopefully we can then get him out into my field and do some training. I feel better now that he's had his check and next time I take him out of the kennel, you know, he'll be going for his walk and he'll be, he'll be fine. I hope he'll be fine anyway. I feel for Elaine. However, there are no quick fixes with a dog like him. Mick is keen to make the most of what's left of the morning's training session. He wants to observe how Tess is handled by her owner, Melanie. I think there's a fundamental problem here between Melanie and Tess because Tess clearly doesn't see her as any kind of leader at all. You can tell me whatever you like to do, just put the food down and go away. That's it. That's all you're here for. Oh, no! At home in Berkshire, Tess ran rings around owner Melanie. Oh, Tess! Please! Oh, no! Is the world according to Tess? Tess wins all the time. I never win. The first task is to show Tess who's boss. Mick demonstrates how even grooming should be turned into an exercise of control. You need to be standing on top of your dog. What we're saying here is dominant position, dominant male. It ain't been bred to sit on your lap and, you know, be stroked and watch the telly. It's been bred to kill things. I'm scared stiff. Are you really? Mm, absolutely. Just keep watching your dog. It really hurts when she bites. In Mick's class, persistence is the key. That's what I've got to get through to. It's a dog. Thing is, I'm starting to quite like the dog now. It's got some real fire in it and it don't give a That's just like me, see? It's just going to be a challenge now, which one of us gives up first and it's going to be the dog. But I like all that, you know. Oh, yeah, what are you grooming me for? Get off. I ain't asked you to do that. Back. Having sized up his opponent, Mick's ready for a showdown. It's time for lead work. One, two, three, uh. My baby don't mess around me because she loves me so and this I know. Now see, excitement, people come in, oh, I need to put, oh, yeah, go on in, yeah, 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 drop it. Go the other way. Good girl. It's owner Melanie's turn. Will she master Mick's technique? Three, two, one, drop it. Get away from me, dog. Okay, stop. What's your job? I style people. What's that mean? I dress you, rip your wardrobe out, re revamp you. Do you make? Does that involve walking around looking in shops? That's what I do. That's for what you look like. You're in there, walking, looking in shops. What's this? <laughs> What's this? We're doing dog training. This is what you do. You get away from your dog. Okay. Oh no! Don't do that. Like that. Get away from your dog. So just escape. All right. So let her pull, and then it's a surprise for her. It's like this, look, I've just given you, well, what would it give you? Two grand, and we're in Bond Street, but you've only got two minutes. You're walking like the mummy. I need you to get a move on and go, I'll have one of them, two of them, six of them. I'm going this way. I'll have one of them, 
and so really go for it. Get ready, three, two, one, drop it, go. Just good check, get ready, now. That's it. Now walk happily down the road with the dog not pulling. And now just turn around nice and quietly and come back. On the other side of Borstal, trainer Robert wants to deal with Casper's antisocial behaviour head on. What often happens with, with dogs like Grace and Greyhounds is they're kept in kennels for years and the only dogs they ever see are other Greyhounds. He's fine with other Greyhounds because he knows those, but these other hairy, fluffy, bouncy, pointy-eared things, they're, they're, they're completely alien to him and he doesn't know how to communicate with them. <laughs> Back home, owner Debbie keeps ex-racer Casper on a tight leash in an effort to control his temper. Robert thinks this is part of their trouble, but determined you can teach an old dog new tricks, he's enlisted the help of kennel manager Sarah and Bugs. I think clearly part of the problem with Casper's behaviour is Debbie's behaviour. What she does is she reels him in whenever she thinks there's a problem with coming. That says to Casper, she thinks there's a problem coming, which means I should regard it the same way. Move Robert now. wants to see how Casper handles the situation without Debbie. Leave it! Okay, do me a favour. Just stand about ten feet in front of me and just face him. So that he sees that you are definitely not with him. Right. Okay, so I've got him on a slack lead now. If he chooses to go over there, I'm going to allow him to go. But at the moment he's choosing not to, which I think is a good sign. Because now there's nothing in his mind stopping him from running over and having a pop at Bugs. Yeah. I'm trying as much as possible to keep the lead slack. There you go. What happened was he went over, he had a sniff of her, he got too far away, the lead went taut, and as soon as the lead went like that, he shot forward. And I think like a lot of dogs, when he senses that, his reaction is to then go forward. Now you see, he still wants to go past and go to you. And he's on a nice slack lead. He had every opportunity, if he wanted to, to go over there. Yeah. But he chose not to. And again, if he were a dog that was dominant and assertive and, you know, wanted all this, yeah. Why isn't he still having a go at her? He'd rather you know? be with me than He'd rather be with you. Yeah. That's actually made me feel quite good because it seems like we have we've might have found a reason for part of the behaviour anyway. The Borstal schedule is run with military precision. After a brief break for lunch, it's straight back to training. It's time for Wilson's first training session. He's not even out of his kennel yet, but owner Elaine is already worried. Okay, try and relax a little bit more. Because I'm picking up on your stress from where I'm stood. Having been on the sharp end of Wilson's aggression, Lynn wants to observe just how Elaine normally handles him. Mum, are you going to go for a walk? Right. Back home, going for a walk with Wilson is an endurance sport. It takes all Elaine's strength just to get beefy Wilson round the block. And he's still growing. Sometimes he will. Sometimes Wilson's he normally walks on a check chain, not a method yes. traditionally used in Borstal. But for now, trainer Lynn wants to avoid any more changes to his routine. But already, there's a problem. Uh, are you aware that there's a right way and a wrong way to put a check chain on? Right, we'll go through that as well. Before Lynn gets a chance to explain how to correctly use a check chain, Wilson's back to his old tricks. Lily, down! You all right? Can you manage him? He's going to go for me here, Lynn. Training Wilson can only continue once he's calmed down. It's a slow process. The way that a check chain should be used is about a little correction. A little check and then goes loose again. If you've got it on the right way, It tightens up and then immediately drops down again. So you walk along, the minute he's on the lead, just drop your hands, give him a little jerk, then let it go loose immediately. Walk backwards, continue to walk backwards until he's in the right place. But Elaine finds the new method hard Sit. to handle. Sit. Sit. Heel. Okay, if he goes in front, give him a little jerk and walk backwards. Heel. 
Elaine isn't the most natural of dog handlers. Um, she's certainly struggling with the technique. Okay, jerk him and come back. Good. However, I still maintain that this is the best technique. I think we stick with the check chain. We just make sure that she uses it correctly and just persevere. But for owner Elaine, the session feels like real progress. It's still unpredictable, but I'm going to watch him. But I just feel 100% better. I feel a lot more de-stressed now. Mick Martin likes his dogs big, but he's seen something in Little Terrier Tess that's turned his head. Can she live up to his expectations on the agility course? At home, Tiny Tess showed off her agility by raising hell. But it won't be Tess that'll be the problem. I've got one that knows what he's doing, the dog. Excellent jumping dog. I've got one that doesn't know what she's doing, the handler. She's completely cack handed gone all wrong now. I need to get them both working together for the same purpose. Ready? Hup. And that's all you do. Go. Hup. That was you, then the word, then the dog. Now. Oh, no, stupid. Why are you jumping? I have no idea. Up. Oh, I'm sorry. Too odd. At the moment we're going in a different direction. And um, it's hard work. Tess! I just need to toughen her up a little bit. Take charge. Take her straight back. Hurry up. Don't stop and and pull him around like that. You've got to run that last two paces. Good Get job. ready. Go. Say it. Oh. Okay, do it again. Eventually, dog and owner begin to find their rhythm. And by the end of the afternoon, they'd come on in leaps and bounds. Oh. Mick has unleashed a natural talent, and he wants to see just how far Tess can go. Without a doubt, I think this is the first time that that dog's acknowledged that she even exists. This is the first time that she's actually been able to get this level of respect from the go, dog. Go. go back. Go, 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 go. Oh. Eee. That's the one. Good girl. Probably did somewhere around five foot. The rot I had did six. That's how far the rot went. Can we do it tomorrow? The record, I haven't had one that does seven. Oh, let's try it. I'd like to try it. Yeah, oh yeah, we'll have a go. You know me, always up for a challenge. But I, oh, well, I, I can't see that little dog doing seven, but if he can, it'll be a miracle. Tess will need a good night's sleep if she's to attempt the Borstal record tomorrow. It's been a big learning curve for everyone. Dog out. But before the day's over, all the dogs must be given a final walk. As the dogs bed down for the night, the owners lick their wounds. I have a very large blister on my feet. <laughs> my feet are really, really sore. I can't even walk. Nail I'm like a crip. I don't have nail polish on now. Do No. I can't even cut my own toenails. What do you do? Chew them? <laughs> <laughs> no, Wilson does. <laughs> I'm hoping. There's no crows going to wake me up at half four in the morning because I'm absolutely shattered. Bad dogs Casper, Wilson and Tess are serving time at Dog Borstal. In just 24 hours they will be up for parole. But they'll need to prove they are reformed characters. Oh, Have any of them got what it takes? There's only one thing left, isn't there really? Pray. It's the last day of training. Both the crows and the inmates are up at the crack of dawn. With just hours till their test, none of the owners can afford any mistakes today. I'm exhausted. I could actually quite do with the day off, but... <laughs> Instead, they'll face their busiest day yet, starting by scrubbing out the kennels.
Raised as a professional racing greyhound, Casper used to chase rabbits for a living. But now he's retired, he's finding it hard to kick the habit. In today's session, he'll be going deep into the heart of Borstal country. The rabbits will be out in force and all going... If he can learn to leave these, he can learn to leave anything. To break their habit, Robert wants owner Debbie to use tough love in the form of a spray collar. I know that spraying him is not something you're fond of at all. I can kind of sense that somehow. I don't know why. I must be psychic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Debbie has to walk Casper past rabbits and use the spray to teach him to resist the urge to chase them. Leave it! Okay, now keep walking. Just keep walking. Spray of air. He's got air in his face all the time. All we're doing is giving him compressed air. It's not going to kill him. He's not leaving it, Deb. I don't want you to cut him any slack. Right. Okay, so bring him down the bank. Casper is responding well to training, but Debbie is finding the timing difficult to master. Leave it! Right, tell him again. As you spray him, always tell him to leave, remember? Okay, just keep Casper walking. Come. Keep walking. Now look at him. Casper, come. Leave it! Good boy. Good, take him around once more for me. Good boy. Good boy. That's where I wanted him to be. He didn't even have to say anything. He just said, you know, I'd best not even look. Because mm. you'd sprayed him the time before. That could make the difference between running out of a park yep. and not running out of a park. Yep. A few days of doing something like that, you probably would never need to use it again. Yeah. Hefty American Bulldog Wilson has made slow progress this week. But in their last session before the test, he and owner Elaine will have to raise their game. Back in the world, Wilson kept Elaine prisoner in her own home. He knows I'm going out. He'll wrap his paws around me as if that you're not going. Wilson has pushed everyone at Borstal to the limit. But trainer Lynn won't be broken. Similar to yesterday, we're going to take it nice and slowly, step by step. We're going to keep trying to leave the room and keep trying to leave the room and keep making Wilson understand he has to stay where he is and not interfere with Elaine leaving. You're going to say, wait there, you're going to go out the door, you're going to come back in again, tell him to sit immediately, you come back in, okay, and give him a treat. It's all about calm, controlled behaviour. We want calm, controlled behaviour when she leaves, calm, controlled behaviour when she's gone, and we want calm, controlled behaviour when she returns. Now, every time Elaine leaves the room, she tells Wilson to wait. If he gets it right, he gets praise. And ultimately, it needs to be done again and again and again. And there's so many different environments that we can do it in before we really know that Wilson's learned what he should and shouldn't be allowed to do. Wait there. Eventually, Wilson gets the message and Elaine starts to feel more optimistic. I'm still a bit jittery inside, you know, because I'm, I'm hoping that... I'm hoping that nothing goes wrong at any time, but brilliant today, going out the room and, yeah, getting my coat on, letting me go out the room, sitting, waiting, really good. But with Wilson's unpredictability, any progress could be short-lived. He does seem to be stressed around me, but that's his attention-seeking again. With Wilson, we've got to realise that in his case, we could always be one step forward and two steps back. Come on, well. My heart goes out to Elaine. She's worked damn hard. However, we haven't made enough progress, and I'm going to have to rethink that test for tomorrow. Athlete is ready. Tess and Melanie are now working well as a team. Good, good, good. That's it. You know, I slagged the dog off for being a little scrawny dog. But what we've done now is we've transferred that character, that sort of nasty little bit, in, and put it into energy um, to do something that they can both enjoy. As a finale to the training, she's going for Mick's long jump record. Here we go. Get ready. In your own. Come on, Tess. It's her best jump yet, but has she fallen short? No, that was a proper jump. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven feet. It's a victory for small dogs everywhere. When we see that dog clear seven foot, 
mate that is unbelievable you know that is absolutely unbelievable i've only ever had one dog do that jump and it was three times the height of that dog i'm never gonna get one but very nice dog can i pick her up do what you like it's your dog Gotcha. don't pick your dog up i was don't joking pick, pick something up you can carry my bag with 10 kilos of sand <laughs> good girl tess good girl It's the last evening walk, and after a week of roughing it, Mick's golden girls are feeling the strain. I've got a big blister the size of Friday. Horse bites, no voice, mouth ulcers. Very attractive. It's all happening. Dirty hair and probably a broken nail. Still, still looking glamorous, mate. Still doing the whole ensemble, black bag. As long as you've got the bag, I'm not bothered about the rest. Despite the distraction, Mick's always hyper-vigilant. When the last dog fails to appear, he swings into action. Well, I've been standing here now 15 minutes waiting for Casper and uh, hasn't turned up. So I've just radioed the kennels to find out that Rob's up there doing some extra training. Good boy, come on. Trainer Robert has snuck speedy Casper off to work on his weak spot, recall. Come on. You see, he's desperate. He knows he can't beat me tomorrow. He knows he's got no chance of getting the pass with that dog. He needs to do an extra training. Just scared like always. And he needs to be punished. Doing extras, Rob. And they're off. Good boy. Good boy, come here. Whoa. With their dog safely banged up, the other owners hit the books and the bottle. What are the seven things all dogs need? Water, food, a pack, leader. Don't know what the A is. Ah. Uh, what was it? Affection. Affection. <laughs> now I've just about had enough, so we've got test day tomorrow, so it's good night. I've got the family coming tomorrow, and I'm hoping that Wilson is not going to let me down. I've got a lot of hard work to do and I'm looking forward to it. And if I don't go home with 20 out of 20 and a red rosette, I should be quite disappointed. It's been an intense week for everyone. Tomorrow they'll find out if they have what it takes to graduate from Dog Borstal. It's D-Day for the inmates. In under an hour, they'll have a chance for parole. Men! Ooh. And with so much riding on the test, Hiya. Elaine's family have turned up to give moral support. <laughs> Hiya. The test today will be judged by Richard Clark, one of the most respected dog trainers in the business. His word will be final on whether they pass or fail. Each trainer has designed a rigorous test, but from now on, it's up to the dogs and their owners. They're on their own. First up is Casper and his owner, Debbie. Boy. I think what worries me most is probably Casper's recall. If he does see a rabbit, he may go. At this moment, I'm probably feeling about number five on the nervous scale. Before coming to Borstal, ex-racing champ Casper was always spoiling for a fight. And after four years of chasing rabbits round the track, Casper was too racy to be let off the lead. The first part of Casper's test is recall, with another dog present. To make matters worse, Borstal's resident rabbits are out in force. This is, you know, really scary. Casper! Go Casper, on, come! Go on, Sam. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Good boy! Wait, 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 wait. Oh, <laughs> I think I was going to have a heart attack. <laughs> well done! Oh, good boy. But it's not over yet. The next part of the test is even more of a challenge. Casper will have to pass other dogs without his muzzle and without aggression. One of the things Richard focuses most on is control. If Debbie doesn't control Casper and he's not satisfied with her control, 
She'll have blown it already. Just stop and have a little chat with this lady. Leave it! Leave it! OK. There's one more dog to pass, and it's Debbie's last chance to prove she really can control Casper. How are you? Good. Thank you. Yeah, fine, thank you. Good. Good. Casper's test is over, but has he done well enough to graduate? You did really well. You got 88 distinction. Thank you. Well done. OK. Congratulations, Casper. Um. <laughs> oh, no, he's a good boy. Oh, Casper, look. See, and... Robert's last-minute extra training paid off. Please? Very. Absolutely chuffed now. He's just showing me what he can do. What he can do? Sleep, generally. That's Casper, look. <laughs> Coil spring, always ready for action, look. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is American Bulldog Wilson. Since arriving at Borstal, his track record has not been good. A dog as unpredictable as Wilson will need to be in training for the long haul. But to assess what progress has been made, Lynn has devised a test to judge Elaine's control over Wilson in everyday situations. To me, it's like I'm going to show somebody what my dog can do. If the dog doesn't do it, he doesn't do it. That's great. Things start off well. But as they head into Borstal HQ, Wilson becomes harder to handle. So this is really, really frustrating for her. Sit! Wilson. Come on, Will, there's a good boy. Now he's going to sit in front of the door, which is typical. Carriage him through. So she really struggled with that. The exercise is over, and it looks like the pressure's off Wilson and his owner. What I'm going to do, Elaine and Jay, I'm just going to go and pop out and uh, total up the, uh, the marks. And I'll see you but unpredictable as ever, Wilson does the unthinkable and tries to bite the judge. No! Will this be the end of the road? All owner Elaine can do is wait while Judge Richard reviews her case. It causes me great concern. As I got up to leave, you know, he lunged. And, and try to nip me. And I think there's deeper issues at stake. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to, uh, to fail you. If a dog does try to bite in a judging situation, at the end of the day, it's a failure. With a dog that potentially uh, has a propensity to want to be aggressive towards people, if she then can't control him walking through doorways and stuff like that, it's a liability to wait to happen. And I have a responsibility, and it's not something I take lightly. With Wilson safely behind bars again, Lynn talks through the options with Elaine and her fiancé, Peter. We've worked really, really hard. Unfortunately, Wilson's big issue is this aggression. But that is always going to be part of his nature. We've got the situation, obviously, with your kids, which is uppermost in yeah. my mind. Black and white options are he would be muzzled out in public at all times. He would never be left in a room with the kids. Or you rehome him to somebody that really knows the breed and really knows how to sort it out, and somebody with a lot of experience. Or the other ex decision, which would be to actually have him put down. I can't make that decision. I don't want a family life where I'm going to be. Hey. I don't want to be on edge with him all the, all the time. I wanted a family pet. I wanted someone who the kids would love. I, they do love him. I've got to think of them. They're up next. You need to make a decision. You don't need to make it now. Yeah. OK. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> it's hard for her to tell us, you know, how it is, but I respect what she's done. Um, being frank with us because well, that's what we needed, wasn't it? We needed, we need talent. We needed talent.
The judge still has one more dog to put through its paces. It's been a long, hard week for Tess and owner Melanie. But have they done enough to make Mick Martin proud? Before being sent down, this tiny terrier terrorized her owner. Today, Tess must prove she's a reformed character. I'm going to be very surprised if I don't get a red today. If she does everything that I've said and everything that she's practiced, she's going to do all right. In the first test, Tess will encounter some of the greatest temptations known to dog. Can Melanie keep her under control? We have lots of work to do. Leave it! It's pulling like a Leave it! Leave it! Leave it! Don't go near that Good girl. Good girl, Tess. Finally, the ultimate distraction, the Sunday League. <laughs> what the f hell are these? It's the 1962 West Ham side versus a lot of road sweepers. F nice one, very realistic. Next up is agility. Tess and Melanie have impressed Mick with their form all week. This should be a piece of cake. Please, please, let's do this, come on. You can do this. Run, run, you stupid. That's it. Good boy. Well done. Right. Ready? We're going to do this now. The last obstacle is the long jump. After clearing seven feet yesterday, this four foot jump is Tessa's chance to show the judge what she's really made of. Run, run. And up. You're doing it wrong, for sake. We did it 20 times yesterday. Mick is not a happy man, and Melanie must hold it together if she's to complete the test with any chance of success. It's all riding on her dog knowledge. You okay, Melanie? Yes, fine. <laughs> I think you're a bit emotional. There are seven main requirements that any dog needs. Can you name them for me? Yes, I can. Water, food, pack, a leader, companionship, Exercise. Why have I forgotten the A? I know the A. Oh, God. What are you going to give your dogs? Lots of affection. I know the I know this. Well done. I woke up thinking of it all this That's morning. That's great. I'm going to go away and uh, total up your scores. A pass will give her a yellow rosette, but for the red rosette of distinction, she'll need to have scored 80%. I, don't, I think we've actually, Mummy's probably lost the red for you, matey. We seem to be deliberating a lot. Oh dear. I'm uh, disappointed. So am I. I'm disappointed you don't think you did as well as you have done, because you did absolutely fantastically well. Okay. You've got distinction, you've got 84 marks. <laughs> okay, so well done. Um, I'd like to present you the coveted red rosette. <laughs> don't do whoop de woo and I don't jump up and down like a big girl, but very good test, very good. This man is a peach, I tell you. No, no, I'm a hard man of dog training. No, don't, don't, get, don't get that wrong. I want panto. <laughs> brilliant, mate. Absolutely brilliant. It's been a week of highs and lows at Dog Borstal. Two dogs passed with distinction, but one failed to graduate. Two months later, has Casper kept on the straight and narrow? We're walking the park now. Everyone's happier. The girls included. They're not totally embarrassed by going for a walk with their brother anymore. I think uh, everyone's life has improved dramatically. I can actually stand and talk to people now who have dogs without him barking. It's much nicer for everybody. And just chilled, really. It's lovely. In the Wirral, has Elaine made the right choice? I ran around a lot of associations to do with American Bulldogs, um, Bulldog pedigree in, in, in general. And um, every one of them said, you can't pass a problem on if he's an aggressive dog. But then I had to make a decision. 
to have him put to sleep and that's what I did. There's only one thing that I've got to think of and that's the kids. You know, I know I've done the right thing. He was my baby. You know, I'd had him from a pub every day since. I mean, obviously I've had guilt, but then I think, no, I've done the right thing. I know I've done the right thing, but I loved him to bits. And in Berkshire, has Tess learned to be a lady? The transformation in Tess has been amazing. Um, she's a different dog now, much um, happier. Mm. I think I'm happier, she's happier, and we know who's boss. I fell in love with her when I first saw her, and I think she just fits in really nicely now. And you know, when I'm not with her, I miss her terribly. 